Hello there, I'm your host, Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas. Welcome to Green Power Science. This is a uh, bike that we converted into a generator. This is a 350 watt, 24 volt direct current motor, and it's actually got a little gearbox there. And I'm going to show you a close up. And what we've done is we just hooked it up to an old bicycle. This is an old 15 speed bicycle that we mounted the back to so it would be stationary. And we've got it in the uh, highest gear right there. And if you see that that sprocket comes down to the sprocket on this motor, there is a five to one difference there. So every time Denise pedals that one time, that sprocket right there turns five times. Now inside behind that sprocket is a gearbox that has a nine to one ratio. So every time Denise pedals the bike and does one full revolution, she's actually turning that motor 45 times. So if she could get it up to say one revolution per second with her pedaling, that would put that motor at almost 2,700 RPMs. Right now Denise is pedaling this with no load and you can see that we're producing 27 volts now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little short in it and I want, to, want you to see how it puts resistance against her. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Okay, that was with the short. Here we go. I'm going to do it so you can see it. This is a... You see how that almost brought her to a complete stop. Wow. <laughs> That's actually putting... Sorry about that. That's actually what a load does to a generator. That's why whenever you see somebody on uh, YouTube producing a lot of voltage, Without a load, it doesn't really matter. So, anyways, now what I'm going to do is we're going to hook this back up to the compressor and I'm going to show you a couple things. Okay, right now she is uh, pedaling the bike and you can see that there's uh, 18, 19, 20 volts. This is a 130 volt motor, so you can actually go a little bit faster than that. And this compressor is kicking along pretty good. Now, I can also give add resistance to her by just simply covering up this hole. But you can see that she's pedaling. And then if I put my finger over the hole and create some resistance there, you can see it actually slows her down. So, it gives you an idea of exactly how strong electric motors are whenever they're filling a compressor up because that's not that much air right there. So if I cover this up. So it's significantly harder. Whoa. You don't want to break it? Okay. I almost felt like I, something. So if your end goal was to create some compressed air, this isn't the way to do it. You'd be better off to actually hook the compressor directly to the bike because you would basically be a lot more efficient than that. You're not losing the efficiency as you are in the motor, etc. But what we're going to be doing is using it for to charge a battery. Now, I'm going to have Denise get off the bike. And this is a 12 volt battery that's used to jump cars. And I'm going to show you what happens if I actually uh, hook this directly to the motor to charge it. You're going to notice that that motor starts working. And that wouldn't be really good to charge this because you've got this going on. So what you need is something called a blocking diode. Now you can buy blocking diodes off the internet. They're like three or four bucks. or you can use a controller like the one that comes with solar panels and this has a blocking diode in it and what that does is it prevents it from back charging. So how's it going Denise? Well it's easy right now the resistance is just fairly easy to pedal. That's because she does not have a load on there right now and you can see that we've got it hooked up to the controller and right now, that's the voltage that she's producing. She picks up the go, speed. I can go fast. And she's up to 34 volts right now. It's very easy though. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are gonna see if we can get this battery light to go from check alternator to charge. So, I'm gonna have her stop. Oh. Slowly. <laughs> without destroying everything. 
All right, you can see that we have the uh, this battery hooked up to it now, and right now it has low voltage, 1.2 volts. That's because this battery is actually uh, pretty much worn down right now. If we do the test, it's pretty low, and you can see that the check alternator light's on. Now, what I'm going to have Denise do is start pedaling. A little, slow. little faster. Now, when the voltage gets when the voltage gets over the 12 volts, you can see that it actually starts to charge this. Oh, something. Go, 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 go! It's going to be kind of awkward okay. because the if she goes too fast. It's going to prevent it from overcharging, and if she goes too slow, so where it's not going to have a load. Like, she, right you want to keep it right about 15, 14 okay. to 15. So right now she is charging this battery. There too. I mean, it's not that easy to pedal. All right, so that's the setup charging a battery. Okay, now what I'm going to have Denise do is come to a slow stop. So go ahead and stop. Stop. Complete stop. And now you can see that this battery has 1.9 volts, and so she actually added a little bit. It's going to eventually trickle down a little bit, but she actually did some charging to this battery. Wow. That would be cool if uh, people can do that just on a regular basis when they're doing their exercising. All right, now what we're gonna try to do is get Denise to create some alternating current. You can see that this is the inverter. The light's still a little bit on because we were just testing it, but go ahead and start pedaling. Okay. Okay, you can see that the fan came on, the light's on, and go ahead and slow down a little bit. Go ahead and slow down, slow down. You can see that when it drops, when the voltage drops, the low voltage warning light comes on. That's good. You want to keep it around 18. Okay. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to plug something in, and I'm going to show you how tricky it is to keep the voltage just right for this. You can actually hear the uh, cooling fan running right in there. Okay, now what we have is a 120 volt compact fluorescent. This is a 26 watt bulb and it is hooked to our inverter. So she's going to have to get it up to speed and get everything just right. There we go. Oh. Keep it going. Keep going a little faster. Right. Okay. You're going to keep it, try to keep it right at 12. Okay, hold on. 14 is right. So you can see that this is a alternating current coming out of this and it's being converted from that entirely from the bike. So how would I make it to stay completely on? Well, there there need to be a battery in the, the loop with this because what happens is is the little fluctuations. This is one of the problems with um, going directly to from direct current to alternating current is you just can't keep the uh, you can't keep it perfect with Alternative this is, this energies. Is a workout. I mean, I can feel the resistance on the bike. Now, what we have is a 150 watt bulb put in there. <laughs> We're gonna see how she does with that, if it's even possible. And you can see that uh, this is one of those director bulbs. So that's what the white part on the top is. But it's just a regular 150 watt incandescent bulb. Here she goes. She's doing okay with it, considering. There's like a constant resistance. It's like it's fighting me, the pedals. Right, so we've got this uh, this motor hooked back up, and you can see that I have a four foot homemade turbine blade put on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and have, it's all hooked up to this. I'm gonna have Denise start pedaling slowly. You can see that she's generating the electrical current to do this. And you can see that. And you're going to notice that this has a little bit of a slip here and there as she tries to pick up speed. It's slipping every time. It slips. I... And the reason that this is having so much trouble, keep in mind that we were getting about six or 700 RPMs out of this motor earlier, and we're not getting anywhere near that. That's because of the large diameter of the blade. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. And I'm Denise Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.